Welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're in lovely CYOW with the snow on the ground. And we're talking about standard instrument departures, or SIDs as they're called. And we're going to go through a few different ones and examples of how we're going to set them up and fly them using the G1000 NXI from Working Title. Let's go ahead and jump into it. In this first example, we're here in CYOW and we're taking off of runway 22, something I'm very familiar with. Here in Ottawa, there's only one standard instrument departure and it's the Ottawa 4 departure or CYOW4. This is a vector based departure. There is one frequency, which is 128.17, that's departures. Upon airborne, you contact them. Basically, unlike a VFR departure, you're pretty much switching over automatically without being told by tower to do this. Whatever runway we're on, we fly runway heading. This is what happens if you have a malfunction. But the standard initial climb is simple. Fly runway heading, and they give you the exact heading to fly. So runway 04 is actually a heading of 039. And for non-jet aircraft, we go to 3,000 feet. But that's it. It's pretty straightforward. And what that tells you is upon departure, these little arrows are saying to you, you're flying until you're told to be given a different set of instructions. So when we look at our flight plan, we're going to see that we filed Tuker. Aplov, Elixu, and then Direct. So knowing what our departure procedure is, we're going to come into the sim and press the procedure button. We want to select our departure. So we're going to go down to our FMS. We're going to scroll the outer knob. And then we are going to click enter. We're taking off of runway 22. Then under transition, you'll notice there is none. And that's because when you look back at the chart, there is no other waypoints that we see. This is strictly a vectors departure, and we're going to be instructed by ATC as to how we continue on to our flight plan. And we go ahead and scroll down to load. So it's telling you that you're going to fly runway 22 up to 780 feet so that is 400 feet above ground level before you're allowed to make a turn upon reaching 780 feet you can then be manually sequenced or vectored on headings to get to your next waypoint so now what you're going to see break in our flight plan you're not going to see anything else because you have to reach this manual sequence position, which is a point at which you advance the FMS of the G1000 to the next section or the en route portion. So at some point between manually sequence, they are going to direct us to one of these other waypoints. Now, it happens really quick actually out of Ottawa. Usually not long after your departure you're pretty quickly given a heading to fly and very quickly after that you're given a direct to once they've made sure that the airspace is cleared and so you're pretty much going to get cleared very quickly so you can file tuker but you might even skip tuker and aplov and be sent very quickly to the elixir waypoint to join the Elixir 1 arrival. So once you've loaded this in and you're ready to go, you're prepped. Based on the departure procedure, we want to fly a heading of 219. Now, obviously the GPS has this loaded in and we do see this in our flight plan on the MFD. However, since it's manually sequenced and we're going to be told where to go, I normally put myself into heading mode to begin with. Since we're going to be stopped at 3000, I dial in 3000 on the altitude select. 
but I do not enable any type of mode at this point. What we want to do here is leverage the fact that we can use Toga. Now, currently in the NXI, Toga is not fully operational, meaning if we press the button, we are going to get the pitch and roll attitude that we want to have, which is a straight up pitch. However, it's not actually recognizing that this has taken place. So we want to make sure shortly after we're airborne, pitched up and climbing all cleaned up that we want to enable flight level change so that we'll intercept our 3000 feet. Positive rate. Here's coming up. And flaps are up. So this is the point I was talking about. So you'd be on a pitched up approach, following your command bars, trying to keep within that flight director point. And we're going to go ahead and hit flight level change. We're climbing with 124, we'll say 120. And we're going to go ahead and get autopilot on. So now the autopilot's on and it's following that heading approach flight level change. Now, as you can see, we are approaching the manually sequence position. And that's the point of just saying, hey, you're now in a heading in a vectors. A lot of times right here, about 1700, we might get told left hand turn flying 180. So we go ahead and we dial in a heading of 180. At this point, we're now cleared and clearing the other runways. And with this point, they may say to us, Golf Mike Tango Tango, direct Tuker 8,000 flight plan as filed or 8,000 as filed or 8,000 on course. They all mean the same thing. So at this point, we're able to go ahead and dial in our 8,000 feet. And then we want to come on over and we want to go to our flight plan page like we are on. Make sure that our cursor is there. And since we're going to Aplov on course, we highlight Aplov, we hit direct to, enter, enter, and we now have Aplov. And with that, we can go ahead and engage navigation mode. And because we're already intercepted on it, it instantly switched over. That's how you fly a simple vectors standard instrument departure using the G1000 NXI. Let's go into something a little bit more complicated next to give you an example of where you may have a disconnected departure, which involves headings, but still a portion that is inside the departure procedure. So moving into one of my favorite places to fly in out of is Billy Bishop in Toronto city center. So when we look at the Bomet departure, what you'll notice is, Hey, we're headed runway 26 so we're gonna fly a heading of 262 once we reach 800 feet we have to turn and fly a heading of 150 now many times I've been given a lot of uh, headings out of this airport 180 210 14 like 
they will give you a different heading and break you off. But this is the standard departure. Once you reach that waypoint, you would fly outbound of a heading of 150 and make no turns until directed. Now what's neat about this departure is it has multiple waypoints automatically as part of it. You're very unlikely to get Davsy, but you might get vectored to intercept Davzi between Davzi and t -Suck. So that's part of the departure. Or if you are leaving on runway 08, you take off and you fly very quickly a heading of 090. It could quickly turn you to Davzi since you're around the smokestacks that are over here. But again, depends on the controllers so he, we're going to be departing runway 26 and we're going to follow our way out to MDOS at which point we're going to get vectored on a heading of 150 until they give us something else so we have our origin which is CYTZ we have our first en route waypoint of MIVOC but at this point we want to go to the procedures page and we want to turn the outer knob to our departure. We want the Bowman 7 off of runway 26 and we are going to MyVoc on this one. So we click enter. Normally that would jump to load. We hit enter. So right there, we've got our departure and we have that same type of sequence. Only now you see that it isn't just an altitude and then manual sequence. It's departure of the runway to an altitude where you can make a safe turn. We fly then to MDOS. And from MDOS, we are manually sequencing on a heading of 150 until ATC instructs us further. But unlike the other departures you'd normally see, from there, we are not yet into the en route portion. All of this is part of the departure sequence. However, unlike other departures, this one has this break and we will be transitioned at some point. And like I've said, generally in the real world, we skip Davzi and get t -suck most of the time. So for this one, we're going to use the FMS because we can see that it does have us flying out and making the turn. So we're going to engage LNAV or navigation or nav mode or GPS mode. Next up, we're going to dial up our altitude. And as per the SID or standard instrument departure, we're going to be climbing up to 3000 feet. So we dial in our 3000 feet. We have pitch dialed in. Now, normally we could choose to pitch up. But again, we're going to use that um, HOGA ability and that will set our seven uh, degrees of pitch. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get ourselves started. See on the center line, power is full. Rotate. Pause the rear climb. Tap the brakes. Gears up. Now we're going to intentionally turn the autopilot on. Nav mode is enabled. 
We have a positive rate of climb. Flaps are up. We're going to go into flight level change mode. We're going to dial up 110 knots. So now we are climbing in our GPS and our flight level change mode. At 800 feet, we're going to manually, or sorry, we're going to FMS sequence or GPS sequence. And at this point, we are following the standard instrument departure out of City Centre Toronto, which is going to now take us to our next waypoint. But this is that great example about how this next waypoint is simply a heading that takes us out at 150. So we fly to MDOS. And then from MDOS, we will make a turn and fly 150 until sequenced by ATC. Let's go ahead, skip ahead, and see the next segment. Now, normally, I've never made it to 3,000 feet without getting a change in my vector to be pushed on course. Again, that probably has more to do with the fact that I'm flying a propeller as opposed to, say, a turboprop. So we're not even going to make it all the way right now out to Edmos, MDOS, before we would actually get turned on course. So at this point, they're probably going to tell us, hey, Golf Mike Tango Tango, when able, direct T suck, climb and maintain 9,000 because 9,000 is usually what I filed going in that direction. So we've highlighted T suck by using the outer FMS wheel. We're going to then press direct, enter, activate, and because we're already in. GPS mode, that turn is going to automatically be started. So we're now going to go direct and intercept T suck. And the other portion that was given to us was climb 9000. So going east, we're going to go up to 9000. And we're going to use flight level change or IAS or speed mode. We're going to go ahead and dial in 120 knots for a climb in this plane. And just like that, we have now successfully flown the departure. Everything is broken up into sections. You've got the departure, the en route, and the arrival slash approach phases. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you understand how a standard instrument departure works and how to leverage the awesomeness of the G1000 NXI to fly those departures. If you haven't already, please hit that like button. If you've yet to join, hey, hit the subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything. Come back next time when we're going to focus on the en route portion of the procedures using the NXI. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.